As the sun rises on this bright November morning, the first piece of Tower One's glass facade, or curtain wall, is ready to be lifted into place. The building lives in our minds long before the curtain wall goes up, and with the curtain wall, it becomes the real tangible building, and people will have a real sense of those ideas. You'll see what the building really will look like. Sundays are normally a day off at Ground Zero. But today, everyone has come in especially to see this moment. Yeah, big day. Big moment. For Mike Pinelli, it's the culmination of four years of hard work on Tower One. The curtain wall symbolizes the finish of the building, the exterior skin. It's a big symbol right, to see the wall going. You know, people walk by and say, oh my god, the tower's happening. It's going to be really... That's something we're really proud of. The first piece of curtain wall will be placed at the top of the podium on the corner of the 20th floor. It will start the 1,100-foot glass and stainless steel facade of Tower One, an open, transparent face with a powerful connection to the site's past. The World Trade Center, the one thing that I, as an architect, thought was really interesting about that building is that actually the corners were cut off just slightly at a chamfer. And the setting sun would catch that light, the vertical stripe of light in them. You would see these glowing lines and you would know you were home. And it was one of, the, again, those iconic things, you know. Part of that was those corners, you know, the, the glow of the corners. Drawing inspiration from the original Twin Towers, the design of Tower One expands these chamfered corners, creating immense angled facades. So the building is tapering back with a series of tall, thin, chamfered isosceles triangles, which do what that chamfer did on the original building. Catch the light. This iconic effect starts at the very tip of the triangles on the first piece of curtain wall. Stainless steel, everybody has this impression of sort of cold and hard surface. But this surface has a new finish. It's, it's a texture that reflects the light. And you can see how warm it is, right? It's picking up all the warm colors glowing in this beautiful day. Away she goes. It's starting to look like a building now. So a lot of people worked a lot of hours and a, a lot of long days, you know, to get to this point. So it's pretty, it's pretty neat. So far, so good. While Mike Pinelli and his crew celebrate the start of a new trade in the vertical factory, the concrete teams in Tower One are finding themselves under increasing pressure. The day here on the job normally starts about five o'clock and we get out of here about 5, 5.30 at night. For concrete field superintendent Georgie Fitzgerald, uh, rebuilding Ground Zero is about finishing something he started when the towers fell. September 11, 2001, um, I could still remember that day, bright sunshine. I was on a job up in uh, Columbus Circle, and all of a sudden, a lot of people were running around saying a plane had hit um, the towers. And a lot of us, the concrete workers, started to band themselves together, and we made our way down here that day. We all came down looking to help. You know, whether it be a building you put up or a building that collapses, it's still construction. I was here for four days straight before I had left. Some of the guys that worked with me stayed for like two weeks, and there were many that stayed for months and just the thoughts of those couple of days um, stuck in your mind. It was difficult to even want to come here and work after seeing what we saw September 11th. It struck deep. Now, by Friday, have to have two, three, and six clean. So otherwise, every day he's going to have you doing this after a report. Pressure that's on a construction job, based on the scheduling, sometimes it's intense. The job pours 500 yards minimum of concrete per day, every day. If you do that every day for approximately 100 floors, then you have problems. 
By the time Tower 1 is finished, Georgie and his team will have poured enough concrete to pave 1,000 miles of sidewalk, making Tower 1 the strongest skyscraper ever built. With 40 trucks delivering concrete each day and five operations spanning the entire length of the building, the sheer scale of the operation is a constant challenge. Meanwhile, I have to shut the crane down at 12.30 today that you guys don't understand that. We have different things that create problems with schedules. I'm not going to get yelled at for taking the whole day getting it off. I'm getting killed with this garbage. Now, when that happens and it causes you a delay in the schedule that you created for that day, it backs everybody behind. I'm not going out the late, all right? Georgie and fellow superintendent right, Tony Carney are in a daily struggle to keep their teams on schedule. It's like a war. That's the best way to explain putting up this building. It's like a war. There's a series of many different battles. Just a quick walk with you guys just to see where, just to see where we're at. All to right? keep the vertical factory on track, Tony and Georgie must complete one floor each week and turn it over to Mike Pinelli. Currently, they are a full six floors behind schedule. Move up to 20. Georgie, you got a minute? Is there a reason when I'm the concrete contractor, what you'd like him to be is instead of being, you know, down here, you want him to be up here this way. The rest of those operations could move up. By him being a little lower than he wants to be, he's kind of holding the subs who can trades at bay. The plan was this floor, all right, by next Friday is mine. Ours, 100%. A week from today? A week from today. He turns the whole floor of me. Then every week, another floor. Yeah, everybody's dependent on getting the concrete operation out of the way. We've got to get out of Dodge, basically. So this is, this is our problem, so and it's a huge problem. What I'd like to know is, listen, are you going to be able to start stripping some of the doorways? My head's gone. I know George's head's gone. We're scrambling, you know, internally and saying, OK, how are we going to pull this off? By the end of the day, it's supposed to look like this. With a concrete operation causing a domino of delays down the building, a solution must be found. Ultimately responsible for getting Tower One into the skyline is Mike Pinelli's boss, director of construction, Steve Plate. Very simple. Here, Alan, we're going to have to design something with Leslie Robertson, their designer. Let's make sure we get an answer on that later today. My role is basically to run the entire project from cradle to grave and alleviate any problems that would stand in the way of us and success. Yeah. Can we accelerate that? Yeah, when we do building, I just want to see this thing people. done. No, I, 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 I'm I, not doing credit. I've had enough, I, I, you know? Steve's drive to rebuild is deeply personal. In 2001, he worked in the Twin Towers for the Port Authority. He survived September 11th only by chance. On 9-11, my older son asked me, Dad, can you give me a ride to school? As a result of him doing that, I was later than I typically am. I'm usually in my office about 8 o'clock on the 82nd floor of Tower 1, and I was late. And uh, I was fortunate because that's where the first plane hit. I saw the second plane coming down the East River. Uh, and then you could see just about when it was going to hit, the fellow revved his engine. The force must have been immense. 84 of Steve's co-workers died on 9-11. He keeps a picture of every one of them on his desk. When those towers fell, a, a part of me died. That was my life. That was my purpose. People ask me, why are you here? My picture is in front of me. That's the reason. Those faces looking at me from my desk. That's what it's all about. And we, that moral compass is pointing true north and hasn't wavered since day one. And that's what this is all about. Steve walks through every inch of the 16-acre site on a weekly basis, monitoring eight different construction projects in minute detail. Right, guys, let's get some energy here. Who's really... We're trying to give Steve an understanding of, you know, progress. Hey, bottom line, you're going to be able to get to a weak site. You've got to put a roof on 29. Get upset with me. I'm asking a simple question. Our concrete contractor calls the project a beast. I mean, it's never been done before with the concrete. There was a very sophisticated requirement. 
to accomplish the highest strength concrete, the tallest building, meeting a certain cycle. Well, listen, that concrete's going out late today. I thought we just had the one run, and we were opening up a channel. So I always say we're writing the book. There is no book. We're writing the book as we move forward. No one's ever reached one floor a week. The concrete delays are now Steve's biggest concern. He calls Tony, Georgie, and the rest of the team to an emergency meeting. And we said, guys, we've got to figure this out. And uh, failure's not an option. Thanksgiving seems to be a little bit aggressive. We're falling more like the first week of February to catch up. Is now, instead of Thanksgiving, it's February? But here, here's the yeah, problem. Here's the problem. Asking. I sat here last Friday, and we had a plan to get done by Thanksgiving. Everybody's looking at me like it was an out-of-body experience that I wasn't in this meeting. They at least try. thought that I'm not crazy. Am I missing something here? We're off the mark by six floors, so we're gaining two floors per month. Two floors to gain up to six comes out to three months. You're going to get two pours in one week. You're going to get one pour in the next week, two in the next no, week. No, it doesn't matter, but the net effect is you're, getting you two more, you're catching up two floors a month. Okay. So how do we go to eight floors in a month? To work I don't have that answer right now. With their backs against the wall, Tony and Georgie have to find a way to get back on track. We've given our word that we're going to make these schedules, and there is a sense of pride to be able to put this building back up and show that, you know, we can get this done. 9-11-11. This is an emotional goal. It's about a personal commitment to making it complete. The day after Christmas, a huge snowstorm hits. New York City, 8 to 12 inches. Eastern parts of New York may pick up. Even more. But I gotta tell you, sidewalks are much better. Apparently, Mother Nature has. The whole of New York City is shut down for days. At the time, trees that were coming down from the. Tree Construction at Tower One is brought to a complete standstill. It's gonna be similar with feet of snow and horrific winds. When it starts snowing, we start shoveling. I've got to clean all the streets, right with a front end loader. I've got to clean all the hoist platforms. I've got to clean all the snow from point to point on the typical floor so guys can get around. Instead of erecting steel 600 feet up in the air, iron workers Mike and Tommy are grounded, sending containers up to the top of the tower to be filled with snow. We gotta clean it all up, get rid of all the snow, load by load with the dumpsters. We hook them up, send them up, and they start shoving them right in. The entire Tower One team is now facing a monumental delay. But no one is giving up. On September 11th, 2011, the world must see Tower One in the skyline. When we first got here, the hole, the pit that was here, it was just like, it was one depressed area. We got here two years ago now, and this is what we have the show for it. And by the time September 11th comes around for the 10th anniversary, it'll be so much more. And it, it better, it better show people that we're doing some progress down here, because I'm working my ass off. Even at night, on a winter night, I always see someone standing, looking at the site, on the construction. And I wonder, why are they there at midnight looking? But there is a longing, there is a connection of the site. It's something memorable, something that will tell a story. And it's important to have in the skyline something really remarkable, something that will be iconic in a profound sense to testify to the importance of this site. The men and women rebuilding Tower One will have to rely on their grit and determination to keep Tower One rising into the New York skyline.